All right, hey guys, thank you guys for joining me. We are going to be looking at Psalm 66, guys, all right? Uh, hope you all are out there having a blessed and wonderful day. As always, I apologize for being a sweaty, disheveled mess. I was outside doing mechanicing work, and I've got a bunch more to go back and get to, but I wanted to come inside, cool off for a minute, and put together a Bible video to share with you guys and to feed myself as well, all right? So with all of that in mind and with all of that said, let's get into a little bit of prayer and we are going to continue our walk through book two of Psalms with Psalm 66. Heavenly Father, we just want to come before, before you today, Father God, thankful for being woke up, Lord. Thank you for... for Thank you for providing a life for me, Lord. Thank you for providing a life for each and every one of us, Lord. It's not like you just give something to us and we just run away and that's it, Lord. We are sustained moment by moment by you, Lord. Let us never forget that. That, that every second, that every breath, whether in pleasure or anguish, is a gift from you, God. And it is more than that. It is a chance to glorify you, Lord. Help us to do that. Help us to... Help us to never tire, to never to never stray too far, Lord, to stay passionate and vibrant and, and filled with a with with a childlike awe and with a profound passion and hunger for things of you, Lord. Let us not desire the things of this world, Lord. Help us to wake up every day, Lord, and, and to to crucify that flesh and to pick up our cross, Lord, and to follow you to follow you into the work of the Great Commission, to follow you into our own individual daily walk of faith, to follow you in the paths of righteousness, to follow you into eternity, Lord. Help us to never, never turn ourselves from you again, Lord. Uh, Father God, I would ask that this video be a blessing and a nourishment to the flock and that it also catch the attention of anyone out there lost as I was for so long, Lord, still lost to drugs and, and lost to um, the flesh and, and perversion and worldly desires and secular ways of thinking, Lord. Let us just speak against all of that, that we would all come to you, Lord, for everything, that we would come to you for guidance, that we would come to you for, for how to and what not to and all of it, Lord, that we would always seek you with everything that we have, Lord giving all of our heart, soul, mind, and body to you, Lord. Father God, I would pray a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering, as always, over the hearts and the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord, that they be not physically exploited, emotionally exploited, spiritually exploited, Lord. That they find you just as we all would find you, Lord, and that we follow you just as they would follow you with everything that we have. Father God, we pray all of this in your holy, heavenly, mighty, and righteous name. In Jesus' name, amen, guys. Uh, as I said, Psalm 66 is where we're at today, guys. Uh, let's get into this. <clears throat> Praise to God. <clears throat> For his awesome works. To the chief musician, a song, a psalm. <clears throat> Make a joyful shout to God all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. He rules by his power forever. His eyes observe the nations. Do not let the rebellious exalt themselves. O oh, bless our God, you peoples, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Who keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved? For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have refined us as silver is refined. You brought us into the net 
You laid affliction on our backs. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but you brought us out to rich fulfillment. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt sacrifices of fat animals. With the sweet aroma of rams, I will offer bulls with goats. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I cried to him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. But certainly God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God who has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Amen. I know I agree with that. Every day I'm so grateful that God has not turned his grace and his mercy from me. I know you have to feel the same way. You know, we are all... Like sheep, we all go astray. We are all so profoundly broken inside without God. God is not... I think sometimes, and this certainly goes for me, this is off topic here, but I think sometimes... How do I want to say that? I think sometimes God can have so much for us that it can be hard to see. I think that sometimes God can have so much grace and so much, I'm trying to say this the right way, um, it just came to me. God can have so much grace and so much mercy than we can ever imagine that sometimes I think that we stop having the blessings in our life because we think we've been blessed enough and maybe we don't understand all that God has for us. And I don't mean, I don't mean wealth or mansions or anything like that. I, I just mean that we have to try to stay open because we never know the way that God is going to work through us, I guess. That was a really confounded way of getting around to that point, but it just kind of sprang into my mind. And for some reason, I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, let's get on to what I have for you guys today. Um, Guys, I hope today finds you well, and I am so thankful to have you here with me as we continue our walk in God's Word. And today's bread is Psalm 66, which is a bit lengthier than average, but is still the work of King David and Breath of God inspiration. With little effort, we can see that Psalm 66 serves as a sequel to what we read yesterday with Psalm 65. 65 zeroed in on God's awesome deeds in creation, 66 focuses too on awesome God's on God's awesome deeds but now it's on those in redemption in effect we see a shift in focus or audience let's call it in verse 13 where the psalm seems to go from a community focus to an individual one before jumping into verses guys let's look at the opening real quick where we are presented with a Thanksgiving Psalm, what I have to share here has to do with about the first five verses, I believe. What we have there is a a Thanksgiving Psalm that summons forth all of creation. It summons forth, it calls to the earth as a whole to come and see. To come and see that which God has done. To be singularly united to act out in corporate praise with these words, our psalmist does double duty in honoring God Almighty for who he is, but also offering up a show of thanks for his listening and his specific answers to certain prayers. Um, let's look at verse 3, guys. Say to God, how awesome are your works. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. 
Awesome here could have easily been translated also as great and fearful, and he most certainly is. The psalmist uses the language, the, I'm sorry, the psalmist use of the language of submit points to the understanding that when God Almighty appears as a warrior, when he manifests in that warrior form, enemies or any foolish enough to mount opposition do in fact have every reason to fear and to even expect their own destruction. I mean, this is at the hands of a righteous God who is ready to do battle for his. All right, let's look at verses 5 and 6, guys. Thank you so much for letting me share. Come and see the works of God. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. He turned the sea into dry land. They went through the river on foot. There we will rejoice in him. Y'all, I love that part. He is awesome in his doing toward the sons of men. And boy, howdy is he, man. Um, guys, here we have an invitation to remember the great and mighty acts of God throughout history. Verse 6 tells us, this, tells us that the specific deed here is, in fact, the Red Sea crossing. I believe exclusively, though some think that verse 6, latter half, let's read that. Um, so at the beginning it says, he turned the sea into dry land. Some would see that that talks about the Red Sea. And then it says, they went through the river on foot. Now some believe, I don't necessarily believe this, but some believe that that latter reference to a river is also a reference to the Jordan River crossing that happened some four decades later. I believe that it's just another way of describing the crossing of the Red Sea. You be the judge. Um, let's look at verse 9, guys. Who keeps our soul among the living and does not allow our feet to be moved. We talk often of how multifaceted, I talk often of how multifaceted and multipurpose Scripture can be in its application. Um, Verse 9 here speaks to a general truth, yes, but it may also be or make an allusion to the Exodus. And lastly, it might actually also reference a context that is more focused on Israel's recent testings. That's also a possibility. It could be one, it could be two, it could be all three. It could be more than that. We know that the Word of God, guys, is living and breathing. No, it is not changing, but it is supernatural in its ability that you could read the same thing throughout your life on 15 different days throughout your life and, and that same chapter that same collection of verses and scripture could impact you totally different and, and could decide or aid in how you handle totally different situations because it is the living breathing word of God and where he sends it out where he purposes it we are told that it does not return void. It accomplishes its purpose. Um, let's look at verse 10, guys. For you, O God, have tested us. You have refined, refined us as silver is refined. So first off, I didn't write this down, but let's talk about that. So silver is refined, as you know, with heat. So yes, the refining process is not fun for silver, but it offers up a better product at the end. <laughs> so do life. So to life, guys. When I was in a rehabilitation home, a Christian rehabilitation home, one of the favorite sayings, one of the favorite verses that we would always reference is, as iron sharpens iron, so one man's countenance sharpens another. Because when you're living in a, in a, in a, whole, a whole house full of nothing but guys who are all trying to get right and they come from that rough life and stuff, you better believe you are sharpening each other. And it ain't fun, guys, but you come out better on the other side for those experiences. That's the point. Um, guys, like any good father, we are like any good father, we are tested by God to either show us wanting or to show us approved. Either is beneficial. When silver is refined, the dross or impurities are removed, leaving a more precious, a more pure, a more desirable, usable product. In man's testing, the disobedient like dross are removed, leaving a a productive 
purposeful, faithful remnant. Um, verse 13, guys, let's look at that. I will go into your house with burnt offerings. I will pay you my vows. So our author expresses his own personal gratitude, his own personal thanks. It would seem, from what we read, that God had recently saved him from some undisclosed issue and, and had in fact saved him during what would have to be described as a period of suffering. And so we find that our psalmist has promised to offer up sacrifices as worship to God for his listening and addressing specific prayers. Let's look at verse 16, guys. That is going to be the last one that I want to share with you guys today. I love you all so much. 16. Come and hear all you who fear God, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. Oh, boy, man. He has done mighty things for mine. Hey, you know what? Down in the comments, if you feel like it, guys, post what he has done for your soul. Post what he has done for your life and for you. All right, let's look at verse 16, guys. By the end, <clears throat> by the end, we learn to come and see is not enough. The invitation now shifts. Now the invitation is to come and hear, to allow a public proclamation of God Almighty's redemption. It's likely that the setting for this come and hear moment is either Passover or at the least one of possibly many different victory celebrations. In other words, this was a place that would have been filled with corporate praise, which we find, though, fades away to the voice of a single worshiper, one who speaks with, with purpose and, and, and familiarity, one who personally declares a great and loving God, one who is caring and active and sovereign. Amen. All right, guys, if you're not subscribed, please smash that subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, guys, and I promise Father God tells us that he wants doers of the word, not just hearers. Um, so I'll take care of the first part, and you can take care of the second part. I'll, I'll proclaim his word to you, and you can plug it in and do it, all right? Um, he also says in Scripture, we're told that, Father God has no greater joy than to know that his children walk in the truth. And that's what this is, guys. It's about desiring the truth, desiring the guidance, desiring the knowledge of God, and, and then taking it out of here, out of this beautiful provision that we have of his word, and, and praying over it, contemplating over it, plugging it into our lives, and watching because the fruit will come, guys. When you're, when you're really on that path, the fruit will come. Ah. Uh, in the form of a happier you, in the form of a joy unaffected by circumstance, in the form of renewed and restored relationships, in the form of the Holy Spirit recreating the mind of Christ within you more and more vividly and actively and vibrantly and more effectively day by day. Uh, guys, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, share it, if you loved it, if you have any prayer requests, any comments. Any questions, anything at all, feel free. In fact, feel encouraged and invited to include those down here into the comments section. Uh, I don't say this often, but hit the notification bell if you want notifications. I love you guys so much. Father God loves you even more. I got to get back out here and sweat, guys. Have a great one.